Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's project is the second in my squirrel series of using the Tim Holtz different size paper in his 12 by 12 pads. Uh, this, perhaps, this particular one is the wallflower. It's the what I call the 12 section or the 12 rectangle sheet. The previous project we did had the 16 square sheet, the three by three squares. This is three by four rectangles. And then yes, I will continue on with um, another project I have in mind for the four by four sheets, or not four by four, these six by six sheets. So you get four to a 12 by 12 page. So today's project uses one sheet of the three by four rectangles or the 12 rectangle sheet and some scrap paper, as well as just bits of lace and such I had in my bin. And I call this kind of a journal a event journal. So if I were to go away for a weekend or maybe if I wanted to journal for a week and a month or if I'm not a heavy journal, maybe even a month, I could have 12 of these, one for each month if I chose. But it's not necessarily designed to be a journal that you write in extensively, but rather specific to an event or a time. And before I ramble anymore, I'm going to show you what I'm making so that you can see if you'd like to join along. Just used a piece of sari silk to close it. And again, this entire journal is made with one sheet of these three by four sections or the 12 section sheet and some scraps. But all the construction, the pages themselves are made with this. And open the cover. And, oh, my challenge to myself was that each page could be decorated, of course, because I like to decorate pages, but that each page had a place or space to write on so I could use it as a writing journal. All right, the cover, just a little bit of lace. And then on the inside flap, I put a little scrap pad or a notepad that I just sewed on. And then the inside page is the uh, uh, library card. And I did that just to indicate what specific event or time frame that, that this was for. A scrap of tracing paper made into an envelope. And I've got some vocabulary cards in the envelope. And then just a three-fold journaling spot. Uh, next page has a tuck spot in the back and then a pocket on the front of the little tuck spot. Again, using a scrap of this paper and a, a scrap of tracing paper as the journaling space. I also put a blank tag in here so that you could journal on that as well. And then there's a ticket and you can put whatever ephemera you want in there. All right, the next page has a tuck spot again for some tickets or a little ephemera and uh, a scrap of that tracing, coffee dyed tracing paper, and a fold out sheet of four sections for journaling. So there's a lot of journaling room on this one. It's just simple coffee dyed paper with a bit of lace on it so that, um, you know, taking it in and out of the pocket is easy. Uh, next page is kind of a twist on something we did in flips, flaps, and folds. It uh, has a Velcro closure. And when you open up this first section, it has got a bookmark or um, uh, I would use it as a bookmark, but I guess you could use it as a journaling tag too. And then it's got an accordion fold with double-sided paper, coffee dyed paper on it. So there's lots of real estate in this one for journaling, even though it doesn't really look like it from the front. And then this page is one of the magnet bottoms, the flip over the top type page, and this top this page or this section is just more, you know, maybe six, eight pieces of scratch paper, coffee dyed paper. And then the back side of it is one of those pockets for the little quotes, you know, fine moments of grace or what have you, so that you can decorate your writing or um, accent your writing as you choose. And because the magnet is so strong, I've got just a little belly band here for another folded over piece of paper to journal on. Uh, next section is a glassine bag with some vintage ephemera inside. I think there's a cigarette or tea card, a ice card, and then um, a little note card on the glassine bag. And then I just put, again, this is a, a four-fold section of journaling paper. So you've got room on the front and back, and it just tucks inside that little belly band. Like so. And next is one of the fold downs. We did that in flips, flaps, and folds as well. It's just a folded down journaling place. And again, lots of room to write both on front and back on that. And then the last page has a little uh, tracing paper envelope with some of that 
fabulous Tim Holtz uh, label tape. It's kind of like a fabric tape. It's real sturdy. So even on this thin glassine, not glassine, uh, tracing paper, it worked real well so I could put a mini eyelet in there. And then I've got some tiny little ephemera in here to decorate uh, whatever I end up writing journaling page wise. And then in the back, I used one of the sections of the paper and made just a little book booklet. And a happy accident on this particular booklet, I had thought I had a straight stitch in my sewing machine, but I had a zigzag and I actually kind of like the way the zigzag looks, the way it kind of holds over and folds over. Um, it looks, you know, good inside as well, but I just kind of like the appearance that it gives. And so that is the little booklet. It makes a great gift if you've got a friend who wants some, you know, mini journal type thing. And it also then works, I said, as I said, for events or specific time frames. So I am not going to sh show you what how I made each of the pieces because there are different videos that show that. But I will show you how to do the little journal itself. And if you don't have the Tim Holtz double-sided paper, you can pretty much use any paper that you've got, any 12 by 12 paper, I should say, for this project. And um, you just cut it into these sections. And the way these sections are going to work is I am going to cut them in strips this way. Now, if it wasn't 8 o'clock at night and my brain was working, I could tell you if that was vertical or horizontal. But at this time of day, um, horizontally across the bottom of the page. So I'm going to cut them into the 4-inch sections. There you go. If I were to cut it vertically, it would be the 3-inch sections, but I'm going to cut it horizontally. So they're going to be the 4 the four three by four sections rather than the three three by four sections. And I'm just going to line them up, cut all three sections at once, and kind of hope that uh, I get it where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I have got that done. And the next thing you need to do is decide which do you want to be your front pieces. Like, this is a really great piece. I'll say I didn't cut it straight. Well, we can fix that later on. Um, but I don't really want that to be my front, and I don't really want this to be my front. So I'm moving on on that one. That's really pretty. That would be a really pretty front. front. But because of the way I've got it folded, and I will have to refer back to this because I made this a couple days ago. Uh, that wouldn't actually be on the front. That would be on the inside. But that would still be pretty because I can put another piece here. So this is a maybe. This is a definite maybe. I don't want that to be on the front. So this is a maybe. And then this one, let's see, this would be the front or this would be the front. Aha, I'm gonna do this one because, uh, let's see, am I right? Mm, no, that would be in the back. So this one would be the front. So no, I am going to choose this as the piece that's going to be my front and back cover. So I'm gonna put that aside. And then I have to decide which do I want to be my inside pages. And you know what? I don't have to choose one or the other. I can choose two of them. Because of the what, what I do for the next section is I cut these pieces down. I've got two 3 by 4 square rectangles here and two 3 by 4 rectangles here. And I did not cut these all straight, so I am going to trim them up right now so that I'm not sorry later on. Okay, and then I'm going to decide which ones I want for my pages. Well, I really like this flower and this flower, so I might want to use those for accents or pieces like this, like this pocket or, um, you know, the different tuck spots. So I probably want something a little bit more subdued or neutral for my backgrounds. So these kinds make, you know, good solid backgrounds. Um, so let's see, and this is a really busy one, so I probably don't want that as a background, but the other side is good. So I, I really like this, the way the colors go together. So maybe I'll save this one for, something that's not a page and let's see well let's cut these in half and see what i've got because i like i said i did cut these a little off a little tiny bit and that's the beauty of ink too i mean they don't have to be 100 percent perfect they will still work and i can put a little bit of ink on it and um, fix it okay so i'm going to choose two for my inside pages and just because 
really, really like that one. I'm going to choose this for a page, and I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose these for my inside pages. Okay, and I do want these to line up. I want them to be about the same height. So you can see here that I didn't cut it very well. And I'm going to go in and trim that. Okay, so I've got two three by four sections, um, two different pieces of two three by four sections. And then I'm going to save these for my little leftover pieces. And then all I do now is I'm going to fold these in half. And you could score them if you choose to, but you, you don't have to. I'm going to score those in half. And these are going to be my inside pages. And you can decide, you know, which ones you want together, which ones you like next to each other better. Those are both kind of busy, but I like them. And yeah, I'm, ooh, I don't really love those two together, but I don't. I really don't. So that's the beauty of it. I can go in and change my mind, and I think I will, because I really didn't like those two together. Uh, yeah, they're the height-wise, they're okay. And I will come in and go like this. I mean, I know they're on the same sheet, and they actually go together, but I didn't like the way they looked in a small space next to each other like that. So, alrighty, that that I'm much happier with. And okay, then this the front is the cover. I am going to fold this in half here, the the four sections of four by three, and then I'm going to fold the back right side. I think I did that out, not in. But you can do either way. I folded it in, not out. Okay. You're going to fold this section. Oh, and actually that worked out well because of the paper. And I'm not going to fold it all the way to the center line. I'm going to fold it to just shy of that because I don't want to make it so that this doesn't fold over, open, and close easily. All right. So that's this section here. This is my back inside cover. And this will be my front now, my front, I am not going to score as tight. I'm going to fold it down. And again, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge, but I'm not going to make it as tight. I'm not going to use my bone folder. I'm not going to make it a sharp crease because I want a little bit of fold here. If you can see with this one, because I've got it um, a little notepad here, I didn't fold it as tight because it's going to kind of roll a little bit around that notepad. So when I was creasing it, I just didn't crease it quite as sharply. But I do want this piece of paper. So on this particular one, I cut this section in half because I want that one and a half piece. It's three inches wide. And so I'm going to come over here and cut this three inch section to one and a half inches. And I am going to put this aside because I'm going to use this for some of my other pockets and such. Now, this section or this piece, what I did to do the inside back, I cut off an inch on the top. So before I glued this down or folded this down, I cut an inch and I just used, um, you could certainly use scissors. Um, and you know what? I think I will. I'll just use scissors. I am going to mark it down. And did I do an inch or an inch and a half? I don't remember now. Um... Looks like I did an inch and a quarter. All right, so I'm going to do an inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter. I'll mark it here. And to make sure that I cut it somewhat straight, I'll do an inch and a quarter here. Okay. okay. Yeah, here we go. And an inch and a quarter here. And... Normally I would use an X-Acto knife in this to make sure that I cut it straight, but for the sake of ease, I'm going to cut on just the inside edge of that fold. So I'm just cutting, you can see here where I folded it, I'm cutting on the inside edge, and then I'm going to use the two lines that I marked as my guides to make sure that I'm cutting it mostly straight. Okay, and again, I'm going to save this section too because I'm going to be using it for one of the pieces in the journal. Okay, too much stuff. 
Okay, and then this is the cover of my book. All right, just like that. Again, I didn't fold this tight because I want to be able to use it for a notepad. Let's turn this the right way. And then these are my inside pages. And so I can look at them. Okay, I really like the color of this one with next to this page. So I'll probably leave that there. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, I like those there. So maybe I will put this one in here. That's awfully busy. If I do this, that's awfully busy too. So it looks like I'm going to be busy no matter what I do that way. So I'm going to put it like this. Now what I do is I'll open this up because I don't want to um, sew it down by mistake. And I'll open this one up. And you can see right here, look how tight that is. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to bring both of these sheets that I've got together. Do I have two or three? I have three, and I didn't want three. Okay, put this one aside, Corey. You need that for something else. Two sheets, much better. But I'm going to take off maybe, maybe an eighth inch. I'm just going to take off a sliver. And am I in frame? No, let's try that. Okay, I'm going to take off a sliver on each edge. And I can save these for clusters if I want, um, or scrap cards. So I'll put them aside in case I need them later, but I don't know that I will use them. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Cardstock is like any other paper, and the more bulk you have, the more displaced the edges of your pages become. So I'm trimming that down now so that it doesn't become a problem later. And then I'm just going to double check, do I have my pages in the direction I want, in the order I want, and the colors I want? Yeah. I don't love him. I mean, even though he's very distinguished looking, that's not what I want. So, but I can cover him up later. All right. Now, because my cover folds nicely here and my cover folds nicely here, I'm just going to use some clips to hold it in place. And then on my sewing machine, I've got it set up to have a long stitch. On mine, that's a 3.5 or a 4. But it's basically just a long straight stitch and I'm going to go and stitch that right now. So as our sweet friend Gail says, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. And I, if I needed to, if I couldn't see where I'd made that crease, I could put my, use my heat pen and then just use a hairdryer or something when I was done. But I can see the crease pretty well on this. So I'm doing a simple straight stitch down the center. And I know my voice is different because I'm turned away and I apologize, but I'm done. So we're good and I'll come back and I'll show you what I did. You can glue this, but I find the thinness of the sewing, the machine stitch, or you can hand stitch it. You could do a pamphlet stitch for sure on this. It's just, oh, am I even in frame there? Yeah, it's just really easy and it makes your pages flow easily and turn easily. And now you're almost ready for the decorating. The only thing I do different, like here on this book, I wanted to put a little bit of lace there. So obviously before I glue this down, I would sew my lace. I like ink on the edge, so I would ink the edge before I glue it down. So you kind of get to decide before you do too much further what kind of decorations you want, if you want lace or not, if you want to use trim or rickrack or I don't know, anything else, anything really. And... Same thing with this. I'm going to cut down and sew some paper pads. So I'm going to put my paper pad here like this. And that is truly it. The only other piece of construction that you've got in this is the back wrap. And I did the back wrap just so that I could put um, a little bit of lace on the edge here. I wanted the contrast of the color and I wanted a little bit of lace. So that's why I did it. I could have made that a tuck spot if I wanted more, but I wanted, I knew I wanted to close it with sari silk. So if you are wanting to put a piece of lace here on the edge of that, you certainly could or sew in your notepad. And again, I want to make sure that this rolls nicely. And so sometimes I'll just wrap it around. Even though this isn't the outside, it's going to go in here. I want it to be kind of smooth, and I want to make sure that my other pages aren't too long. All right, you have the choice. Now, you can use this scrap, which is what I did, and inked it. So you can see here, I inked it. 
And then I sewed a piece of scrap lace on it. And then I just wrapped it around and glued it down. Wrapped it around and glued it in place. Just added a little bit more interest that way. If you don't want this particular piece, you can choose this one or this one or whatever bits. Like that might be really pretty. Or even the, the bugs. That would be really cool too. Maybe trim it here and put that on. So you can use some of your other pieces because you've got four other pieces to play with to do the edge. Okay, I like this color, so I would probably do this one. I like the green and I like the, the font, so I would do that. All right, then my other four pieces. I used one section of the piece for this, so there's one. I did not use any on this one. I usually use scraps of glassine. I used one section of a piece. What I did really is I cut one card in half this way and one card in half this way. So that gave me four pieces to use. And then I cut one card in half to use for this tag in the back. And then I used the leftover bits to punch this tag. And here I used a thin strip of one of the pieces to make the belly band. And then the other two pieces were used I cut it, the other piece, I cut it in half. So this is a one strip cut in half. And then I put a piece of um, washi tape there and just sewed it down so that it could be both sides of my flip. So to make everything that I've shown you in this journal, uh, same thing with here. I used one full sheet of this paper so that I've got a section down here and then I've got the section in here. So again, you don't need to see me do this part because we've got other videos on it. But I used these four sections plus this leftover bit to, oops, I, this leftover bit to do the cover and then to do all the different tuck spots and tags that you find inside this journal. All right, that's it. That's the project. It's, it's quite that straightforward. And just because I chose to use these things, you can decorate them how however you like. I mean, that's the beauty of it. It's a really, really simple journal and it gives you lots of options depending on your scraps and, and what aesthetic you like. Uh, a couple things. This is my third or fourth take, so I don't believe I've said it so far. And if I have, I apologize. But um, magnets. So I used a heavy duty magnet in, in that journal to hold it over the top of the page. This is a magnet sheet and I covered one, it's adhesive back, and I covered one side with thin paper, and I left the other one completely undone. This is a great magnet if they were just touching each other, and it's just paper, it'll hold it, a thin paper, but it's not a super strong magnet, and it certainly wouldn't hold it tight like it was on that page. Um, oh, I'm, I, oh, here we go. These magnets are strong, but look how thick they are. They're probably... I don't know, almost even a quarter of an inch thick. I don't know, not quite a quarter inch, but they're really, really thick. So these are the ones that I use, and I don't have the label. I've ordered more, but these are maybe, maybe between an eighth and a sixteenth inch thick, and they are very strong. In fact, I wouldn't put just plain copy paper over it because I would worry that the magnets would tear it. So when I backed those pieces, I used cardstock, heavier cardstock, scraps pieces because these magnets are so strong. These thin disc magnets, I think they're called ultra thin disc magnets, are fabulous. So there's that. Um, let's see, in this little booklet I used, oh, here we go, negative space for a die cut. And I used the Tim Holtz Sissix mason jar one because the flowers and the stems inside this one are real tiny. And I can cut little bits and pieces off if I want, but it works great in a small journal like this 4 by 3 journal. And I think that was all that was special about it. I, everything else you've seen either on previous videos or it's intuitive. And again, the decoration is just a guideline. You can decorate it any way you want. Last thing, one of my viewers recommended the reptile glue. And I've only had it for a day. And I put it in one of these little bottles because um, I like the ease of, one, it fitting in my workstation. But two, I like the the thin top. And what I have found so far is it 
it might be a tiny bit thinner than the art glitter glue and it doesn't seem to clog the top. Now, time may prove differently, but it doesn't seem to clog the top as much as this does, but I still get a really good hold. In fact, I assembled this whole booklet using that glue and I've had no issues. I think it takes a smidge longer to dry, maybe, so you've got a little tiny bit more wiggle room. And um, like I said, so far it hasn't stopped up the top like the art glitter dude does because I am forever forgetting to put the pin in here and uh, clogging up my art glitter glue. Now I know you can put the tip in warm water, give it a little bath and it'll unclog, but I don't always have the time for that. So there you go. Today's three by four, 12 rectangle project using the Tim Holtz paper or any double-sided cardstock or cardstock of your choice. Thank you for watching. Happy creating and have a great day.